Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I'm here with Josh Seidman, my brother, at his maple syrup farm in Worcester, Vermont. We are up here because we just saw the solar eclipse, which was in full totality at your house. Isn't that amazing? Absolutely breathtaking. It was so hyped up and it lived up to every bit of it. So if you ever had the opportunity to view one, definitely. I mean, I want to go follow these eclipses all over the world now. So <laughs> it's pretty cool. So well, we were so lucky to have the chance to see one in our own backyard. So. It's great. And with family, it was, it was, all, it was even better. So um, what I want to do first is show you what we saw because it was freaking amazing. And what also is amazing is the maple syrup that Josh manufactures here. And we're going to take a final leg of the tour that we started two years ago here and look at the actual evaporating process for the syrup as it is getting manufactured. And it starts in the trees, which we talked about two years ago, but right now the sap is running. And what we're gonna do is show you exactly the steps it takes to get the syrup out of the tree and onto your table. So definitely check that out towards the end of the video. But first, let's take a look at that awesome eclipse footage. Now the eclipse was an amazing experience because it wasn't just something that you saw, it was something that you felt. It got increasingly dark throughout the afternoon until we hit full totality. And this is a time lapse from my GoPro, which I locked the exposure on. And you can see just how dark it got. But when it got dark, it also got colder because the wind picked up, the animals started acting weird. All the things you hear about happened here. And when we hit totality, it was almost like somebody flicked a switch and the sun disappeared. It happened that quickly, although it progressively got darker. But once that last sliver of sun was gone, it got dark. Here's a shot from my Canon camcorder, believe it or not, which caught an amazing image of totality. You can actually see a solar flare towards the bottom there. I was really surprised and impressed by how good the image came out from that camera. Now, what also amazed me about this shot was just how bright things got once that little sliver of sun came back. As you can see, it blew out the camera almost immediately, but also things started getting brighter around us. Now, this is my favorite shot of the afternoon, and this wasn't even of the eclipse. It was of my family observing it. My kids, of course, had never seen an eclipse before, and boy, were they excited when that totality hit. Totality really surprised me, and I think everyone that was watching with me, uh, because it was just such a spectacle, and I can see how many people uh, see this as a life-changing experience, because you really get a sense of how small you are in the universe and how lucky we are to live on a planet where things can align in such a way that we can see such a thing. It's very rare uh, to not only see an eclipse, but to live on a planet where you can get one like this. And as you can see here, my kids were really excited. And you can also just see how dark it got and how quickly uh, things ended and got back to a normal afternoon. All right, so now let's go back and see how Josh makes that maple syrup. All right, so Josh, we are outside in your tank farm here. And last time we didn't have any sap running, but now I hear, I hear it. Absolutely. We are in the tail end of our season right now. So what you're seeing is probably the dregs that'll be the last that we produce. It might be commercial grade syrup, but not the top quality stuff that you all are gonna get when you order online. Unless you're bold and like the very dark and strong, in which case we could bottle this up and send it to you. But it's not over until the spring peepers peep. However, the ice is dissipating off the ponds and I think they're gonna be peeping in the next couple days. So we're in the swan song of the sugar making season. But these barrels are full of this year's crop. These have been evaporated and boiled already. Exactly, so evaporated, is... hot filled at over 185 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, about 670 pounds of maple syrup in each of these 55 gallon drums. So I could pour this right out of that, that barrel onto my, onto my plate. One could, however, <laughs> we are going to refilter it, reheat it, and then fill it into our bottles before we properly seal them and Got package it. them in biodegradable packing material and send them to you. Got so it. we look forward to doing that. So All here's right. up at Rugged Ridge. So you got a lot of product, product here, so people got to start ordering. We yep. got four tanks here. Yep. Uh, they're stainless steel, even though the ladders on the front are steel. Right. They're about 6,600 gallons a pop. And I'll even climb up and just kind of show you what's in here. And I just want to remind you that this is not the finest sap of the Don't year. Drop my phone in the, uh, in this is the last sap of the year. We have about 5,000 gallons of sap right there that we're going to uh, evaporate tomorrow. And it still smells good. It still looks good. It gets a little bit clearer earlier in the season. However, the trees have biological processes. And so sometimes it's clear, sometimes it's cloudy. 
Sometimes it's green, sometimes it's blue, sometimes it's super translucent, sometimes it's a little opaque. So variety is the spice of life and that's still gonna make good syrup, um, but it is the tail end of it. And then if you keep on following me along, I'll show you how we get the sap into our bottles. Well, everything is piped through a stainless steel sanitary pipe into this our reverse osmosis system. Right, now we looked at this last time. And so osmosis is the flow of particles in a solution from high concentration to low concentration. And so reverse osmosis is concentrating that solution from low concentration to high. So this pump, it's actually about 70 horsepower of, well, several different seven to 10 horsepower pumps that we use to pump the sap through these membranes. And the membranes basically it's almost like a roll of paper towels, but that paper towel has holes in it that are act as a screen or a mesh that are so fine that a molecule of sugar, excuse me, a molecule of water can pass through it, but a molecule of sugar cannot. And so we push the water out under high pressure and concentrate the sap from about 2% to 20%. So you don't have to burn as much wood, which we'll look at in a minute to get the result. Exactly, and we're, we feel very strongly about being wood-fired, uh, high heat caramelization, uh, sustainability, a light smokiness, a little je ne sais quoi. It's a traditional way it's been done, carbon neutral, sustainable, and we're not you know, reliant on volatile um, geopolitical climate of oil. So we feel very strongly about using wood. And this allows us to burn about 40 quart of wood to make our yearly uh, yield. Were it not for this reverse osmosis system, we would need to burn 400 cords of wood. Over here in the corner, this is our vacuum pump. I actually turned it off for the sake of this video. <laughs> it's a little bit loud, but this check valve is squeezed tight. The vacuum is holding steady. And you hear that? That's the releaser pumping sap out. So you can't- So this is coming in right from the trees right now. It is, and it's actually coming in right here if you wanted to zoom in and view it. Mm -hmm. And usually it's a little bit more clear in yeah. the lower chamber, but again, this is the swan song. This is the end of the right. season. The trees are beginning to change their biology. It's actually getting a little bit more starch in it, among other things, niter is a mineral that the trees are And people off. should check out the video we did last time because we actually went out into the forest to see how the trees are all, set up for this. So. All the fun stuff's out there. Yeah. But um, you can't have an open-ended vacuum. Mm -hmm. So these cylinders are under vacuum pressure. We apply vacuum up there. These lines go to the woods. And then in the bottom, we have pumps that are on a float switch. And so when they reach a certain level, they push out through the pump and there's a check valve on that pump. Mm -hmm. So that way the vacuum is always intact. Uh, a few minutes ago, this was about 28, 29 inches. Right now it's back around 26 inches of vacuum applied to the woods. Um, at sea level, 30 inches is a perfect vacuum on a high pressure day in a warm room like this. It might read 30 plus. Uh, but um, you can't have an open-ended vacuum. So this is a pretty interesting piece of engineering to solve that problem. Now we're gonna go out to the real, uh, where the magic happens at the evaporator. All right. All right, so we are here the next day and we are, or you are, evaporating maple syrup. So take us through the process quickly. Well, we've already concentrated the sap to reverse osmosis. We put it into this pan up here and so it's now gonna be drawn through the float boxes, through the back pan, and through the flow reverser in the front pans until we draw it off as syrup. So and right now in the back here, it's, it's currently boiling back there all the way through. So it gets thicker as it gets closer to this point here? Yes, it uh, increases relative density or sugar content as it goes. Right now I'm taking measurements off from the draw off and basically I'm trying to get it to creep up we were making good syrup at 219.1 degrees. Right now we're drawing off at about 218.7. It's still a little bit light. So I want to slowly draw off, allowing that temperature to climb slowly. And basically it's like catching an egg. If your temperature is swinging too volatilely, it's harder to average out and make good syrup. But if I can gradually catch it and open it up, see now we're up to 219, 219.1, and that's measured at this probe. So it's probably gonna take about two minutes at that flow rate for me to actually be measuring that sample there. But as I'm getting closer to what I think syrup is, I'm gonna speed up the flow a little bit and try to catch it. So that hopefully we get good maple syrup. So out this, this is all about balancing an equilibrium essentially, but you're burning wood. So your temperature is constantly changing. So what do you have to do to keep up with that? Uh, constantly sample it, constantly adjust your flow rate, constantly look at how it's behaving right now. We just jumped four tenths of a degree when I sped up this, the um, 
flow a little bit. And so we're still a little bit light. However, now we jumped up another two tenths. So that sort of volatile change lets me know there's a bubble of syrup in that pan. And I basically want to pull through that bubble as smoothly as I can, knowing that it's going to be a little bit richer than maple syrup. That's going to blend with that little bit of lighter than maple syrup I pulled out earlier. Then I'm going to homogenize the barrel, make a few measurements of the barrel and make corrections until about the whole thing is full of perfect maple syrup. About half a percent heavy is what we actually go for to make sure we're not shorting our customers. And um, then we'll filter it and barrel it and eventually bottle it. So when people buy so this actually, stuff, it, it, it's not like you, like a machine output here. This is this is really an artisanal process where you have right to be here, on top This is the perfect yep. reading yep. between the H and the red line. And the reason we like it a little bit light is because it's continuing to evaporate right here in the barrel. And so through experience, we know we're going to lose a whole point just through this evaporation. And so we're able to kind of balance it out and um, homogenize our batches. Amazing. And right now we're pulling a little bit heavy. So I know that all of that light stuff, now we're 2% heavy, and we're gonna pull off a, quite a volume at that temperature. Also, you can see the temperature. It was at 220.9, 219.9 is nice smooth syrup, but now we're dropping rather quickly. See how we're dropping almost precipitously? Yep. I'm gonna to start to slow my flow now because I know I wanna catch it like an egg and I wanna stop it ahead of time. Because if you play reactionary instead of predictive, you're gonna have much more volatile waves. So it's, it's, it's making sure you have enough of a fire, the flow rate, atmospheric conditions also you mentioned earlier? Yeah, so if a cloud passes overhead, it'll actually change the temperature at which we're making maple syrup. And so you have to constantly be checking to see what syrup is and then comparing that to the temperature that you were drawing off when you took your measurement, and then that'll give you a corrected number for which you could project to try to maintain your draw off. So but if you want to do it every few minutes, I'm constantly testing and dialing, and that's the difference between being a few percent off and being half a percent heavy for my customers every time. Wow. Well, Josh, this is quite the process here, and you got to be on top of this uh, the whole time it's running. <laughs> it's not a mechanized thing here. I, I do have a gentleman helping me, but um, yeah. I'm pretty much, this is my battle station, and I might, you know, do some direction outside of it, but I really can't leave this point to make the best product that we make. And in fact, we're getting really good draw off now. We're making perfect syrup. We almost got a barrel kit. Let's grab the thermometer. Let's do a relative density check on the barrel. We're balancing out our flow rate. Temperature is dropping. And it so looks I a do, lot darker too. I do actually know that we're gonna need a fire in the not so distant future. And in fact, I'm gonna mix this to homogenize it. And then I'm gonna pull off the sample. And then he's gonna measure the temperature. And then once he confirms the temperature, I'm gonna measure the relative density at that temperature. And we're gonna compare it to our chart and that'll let us know if we have to make a last correction or if this is ready to can. So at 194, we are making... So it's basically how high it floats. Yep, 60 bricks. And so 194, 60, that just hit temperature, but here's my little laminated chart. Okay. I want to open it up because our temperature is climbing again. 193 should be 60 bricks. So we are dead on. And in the next 10 minutes, we're going to continue to evaporate and so I smell, the, I smell the maple sugary goodness coming off of this. It's, it's, uh... We're probably going to wind up that perfect half percent heavy because at 194, we should be 60 flat. That was the exact number we measured. So sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, but <laughs> practice makes perfect. Now we're going to add our filtering medium, which is diatomaceous earth. What is this? Diatomaceous earth. It's uh, fossilized seashells. And if you look at them under a microscope, they look like check, checks mix. And they have huge surface area. That surface area allows them to bind with impurities and they create a matrix in our filter press here. And that filter press is going to uh, separate out the niter as well as the diatomaceous earth. And so there you go, that extra evaporation is gonna get you the extra half a percent. And now we're gonna fire up the filter press and that's gonna pump it through and separate out the niter as well as the diatomaceous earth leaving us with very clear so all that syrup. stuff gets that you just put in gets filtered out in the it process does. right but the paper will get slimed up by the niter and by other consistencies in the sap right and so 
the diatomaceous syrup makes a three-dimensional filter that allows us to process much more smoothly. Then it'll go into that into that barrel there and it's done. Yep. Okay, we're well, ready for a fire. Lon, if you want to assume the position, and I'm going to choke it down because like a freight train, you never want to let it stop. <laughs> we're just a little bit light, but I bet you it's actually heavier than it looks. I think the lightness is because the temperature of the fire has actually dropped, which I'll tell you what, it doesn't feel like it's dropped from here because uh, if you wear the car hearts with the rivet on the front pocket, that rivet gets so hot and oh man, it is. Uh, so car hearts, if you're listening, please take the rivet off your double knee pants. I know they're a nice aesthetic feature, but man, in this circumstance, they uh, whew, conduct. And so we'll burn, this is not a good day, but on a good day, we'll burn two crates of wood, uh, making, you know, five, six barrels of syrup. And how you build your fire is very important. And you actually, the reason he helps me is because the quicker we can shut this door, you can see all of our evaporation right, you temperature die very down. Quickly, right. Exactly. Yeah. So it's all about riding those waves. I've continued to draw off, and I'm actually going to pull a sample right now just to see what I've been pulling off. I've been pulling off a very small volume compared to the whole vessel. So even if it was a small change, it's not a big deal, but you always like to see what it's doing. And considering we lost a whole degree, that was still maple syrup. Even though it's a degree cooler, it should still be. So that's just kind of uh, our practice. Look at that, right on the red line. That's gonna wind up being a little bit heavy by the time it's done pulling off, but you can't argue with that. Well, Josh, thank you once again for the hospitality and uh, another great tour of your facility. It was great to see you actually making the syrup this time. So uh, check out the other video where we take you through the forest. So you can see how the sap gets here uh, to start the process. But thanks for having us up for the eclipse. It was amazing, wasn't it? Pleasure was mine. Really took my breath away. And what better thing than to enjoy it with family, doing what we love and making wonderful maple syrup that we get to share with all of you all. So uh, it's been a great weekend. So Come back any time. And head over to ruggedridgeforest.com. You can get your syrup and uh, keep this guy going. <laughs> all right. Love you, brother. Good Love to see you. Brother. We'll see you soon. See you. This channel is brought to you by the Lawn.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and I'm the Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lawntv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.